You are watching Christ's Commission Fellowship. Changing lives for eternity. Being the youngest and the only daughter in our family, I was treated like a princess. My parents showered me with gifts and provided me the best life they could offer. At an early age, I was taught about God's love and the Bible in Sunday school. I attended J-Zone, called Elevate Now, and joined weekly discipleship group sessions. But despite my upbringing, I chose to live my life on my own terms. In high school, I jumped from relationships to another regardless of my parents' disapproval. I felt, I felt they were overly strict, so I frequently lied and hid things from them. I sneaked out of our house, drank, and smoked. In college, I felt that I could already do anything and finally be free from my parents. On the contrary, they got more protective because of the things they knew I was doing. I felt frustrated not being able to go out with friends on out-of-town trips, parties, and even after class. I resented my parents thinking they never understood what it meant to be a young adult. I would tell hurtful things to my mom because I felt she was the most controlling one. It was in college that I got romantically involved with two girls. When my parents found out about one of my relationships, I thought the best way to deal with it was to run away. I wanted to get back at them for, for their overprotectiveness. Though they sent me numerous messages to come home, I chose to move in with my girlfriend. At 19, my life changed drastically. I lost the comfort and the conveniences that my parents provided. I stopped schooling and had to work to survive. I cooked, cleaned, did the laundry, and commuted around Metro Manila. Despite this, I continued to live boldly by asserting how happy I was to be in a perfect and loving relationship with my girlfriend. But underneath the image I portrayed, I was broken, insecure, and was still in the search for attention and love that my partner could not give. I missed my family and tried going back home thrice to see if I could start living with them again and if they could accept me for who I was. But I ended up leaving each time because my parents and their rules still felt so restrictive and their convictions remained the same. That I am to obey them because I live under their roof. In 2015, a childhood friend I grew up with in Sunday school called to ask how she could pray for me. Since it was mid-year prayer and fasting in CCF, her call was right on time because I got into another shouting episode with my parents and also had a fight with my girlfriend. I cried as she prayed for me. My prayer back then was, Lord, I am extremely tired. If you want us to be together, please fix everything. But if not, please make a way. You know I can't be the one to break up with her. You know me, Lord. You know that until the end, even if it's painful and tiring, I would still fight for this relationship. By the end of that same year, my girlfriend of five years ended the relationship. I went out to drink and cry it out. When my mom noticed my swollen eyes, she hugged me and said, maybe this is the time you will make things right. Fix your life with God in it and finish your last semester in college. 
I thought that was the turning point in my life. But because of my broken heart, I got myself involved with several sexual relationships, trying to find love, security, and happiness. After finishing college, I got my first job in a wine company, but I grew tired and weary from it too. In search for meaning, I opened my Bible one night and read Philippians 4.13, which says, I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. Being so encouraged by the word, I started opening my dusty Bible each night, excited and hungry for what the Lord was going to teach me. During a gathering with old friends from CCF, I witnessed how their lives were being changed by their relationship with the Lord. Seeing them joyful as they speak about Jesus made me want to have the same kind of joy. When I asked one of my friends what made her decide to follow Jesus, she told me that she couldn't do it on her own and that she decided she needed Jesus every step of the way. She said that life is temporary and that God attunes our perspective, so we will place importance on things that have eternal value. It was then that the Holy Spirit spoke to me, changing my heart and allowing me to follow His will for my life. Hungry to know more about God, I joined CCF Katipunan Singles Bible Study and the Big True Life Retreat. It was in, that, in this retreat that I truly understood the gospel with my heart, not just my head. I realized Christ's undeserved, I realized Christ's undeserved love when he willingly gave up himself for sinners like me. I recommitted my life to the Lord and got baptized that same weekend, desiring everyone, desiring everyone to know that it is no longer me who runs my life but Christ. It took a little over 20 years for the Lord's work to take place. But like my mom told me, everything happens according to his plan and his will. During my rebellious years, my parents had no other recourse but to pray and lift everything to God. They never stopped praying despite not seeing any changes in me and my situation. Even their disciples and D-group prayed. My parents even went the extra mile to attend Healing Grace Ministry to truly understand my struggle with homosexuality as they pray for me. By God's grace and through prayers, I now live my life according to God's will. Aside from joining a D group, praise God. Aside from joining a D group, God has opened opportunities for me to serve as a facilitator in True Life retreats and serve in various capacities in the big singles ministry. I also, I also serve with my disciple in the women's ministry in CCF Eastwood. I have also started discipling a group of women, most of whom have also gone through the same struggles I had in the past. I thank God for giving me such prayerful parents who did not get tired praying for me, doing their best to guide me towards the path of bringing glory to the Lord. I am Samantha Sarmiento, once was lost, but now is found. May God alone be glorified. So, itutuloy po natin ang ating series on legit. Ito po ay napaka-importanting bagay because nowadays, many people are claiming to be Christians. But in reality, they're not legit. And sa ating mga previous discussion, we saw that a legit Christian is a legit, there's a legit happiness. Yung meron silang kag kagalakang totoo. Ang totoong Christian, masayahin. And in fact, hindi sila, hindi yung saya nila, hindi dictated ng sirkomstansya. Mas hindi lang sila legit, hindi lang sila mayroong legit happiness, sila po ay mayroong pong legit purpose. Meron silang maliwanag na layunin what makes them really rise up from where they are and accomplish it for God's glory. Kaya may excitement sila sa buhay. Kasi nga, mayroon silang legit purpose. 
At alam natin that they're really legit followers. Hindi sila sumusunod for the sake of following. They follow because they understood that righteousness comes only from Jesus. And they appreciate and they're full of gratitude about it. Kasi akala ng tao, tanggap sila ng Diyos dahil mabait sila. Hindi ho. Kaya tuloy, nagiging boring ang kanilang Christian life. Kasi tinanggap tayo ng Diyos because of Jesus. Hindi dahil sa galing mo, sa bait mo, o sa itsura mo. Hindi, tinanggap ka dahil sa grasya ng Panginoong Diyos. And you admitted that you had nothing in order for you to be acceptable before God. Because the standard of God is so high. Unless you surpasses the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, you'll not enter the kingdom of heaven. And the only way for you to surpass that, kung yun ang pinaka-highest standard doon na nakikilala lang righteous, Si Jesus, yung righteousness ng Diyos, mapa sa atin. Itong amazing, mayroon niyang yung reality ng righteousness sa atin. But, it's not just the position of righteousness, we are to practice that righteousness. Kaya nga ho, mapapansin nyo, ang Christian, hindi naman yan parang, uy, bago na akong tao, wala nang pagkakamali, hindi. It must be practiced. Sa, at sample lang, sample lang. Kunyari, kahit sa pagkanta, maraming tao kumakanta yan. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul long and after thee, iyak-iyak pa. Di ba? Ang ibig sabihin ng ganito ha, naniniwala ka, uhaw na uhaw ako sa'yo, na parang, as, parang, ano yung parang usa, na mamamatay pag hindi nakainom, kaya hindi ako papayag na hindi ako ma, 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 ano, maibsan ang uhaw ko. Nakuha niya? Kinanta yan, may iyak-iyak pa. Pagtapos, makikilig na sa message, tulog na. Ang layo! Hindi, iba yung paniniwala, iba yung practice. Ah, naintindihan? Kung totoo yan, pag kinig mo, kinig ka talaga na, uhaw ka eh. Ang punto ko, eh dapat yung practice tsaka yung paniniwala, isa lang. Kaya ito ang sabi ng Lord. Ang legit na Christian, pagpasok ng chapter 6, sabi yan, ay Christians are disciplined. Dito mo tayo, disciplined. Kaya sabi niya, kung gusto mo maging magaling na basketballista, you practice. In the same manner, you want to experience the reality of Christianity, don't just believe it. Practice it. Kaya ang Christian, disciplined to pray. Now, balikan lang na sandali. Bakit sinabing yan ay part ng practice na yun? Tingnan niyo, sabi ng Bible, beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. Then He began showing us different practices. Giving, arms giving, kaya sinimulan niya. So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet. That's not prayer, verse 5. So when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. Then fasting, verse 16. So when you fast, do not let people know about it. But you see, itong amazing dito, parang sinasabi niya, this is the kind of practice that I want you to understand. Now listen, ha? pakinggan niyo mabuti. Naririnig natin ito lagi, practice makes perfect. That's not accurately true. Bakit? Kung nagpa-practice ka, mali naman yung pinapractice mo. Paano magiging perfect yun? Kaya, right practice makes perfect. Okay po, kaya sabi ni Jesus, beware of practicing your righteousness. Yes, you are righteous because of Jesus, then as you practice, ingat ka, beware. Baka yung pag-practice mo, mali. Naintindihan po? Andiyan pa kayo? Kasi, lalo tayo, ang influensya ng religiosity sa atin, ang daming tinuro sa atin na practice na malabo. Kaya sabi ng Lord, paano ko po malalaman na tama yung practice? Yeah, sabi ng Lord, tinan nyo ha, beware of notice, that before men to be noticed by them. Ibig sabihin, itong practice of righteousness, hindi dapat nakafocus sa audience, sa mga sasabihin ng ibang tao. It must be focused solely on God. Bakit niya sinabi? Tinan nyo, sample, when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet be- before you. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be honored by men. Truly I say to you, they have re- their reward in full. So sinasabi ni Jesus, pag nagpa-practice ka ng righteousness, para lang makuha mo yung approval ng ibang tao, medyo alanganin. Bakit? Kasi, pwede mong gawin yan para sabihin ng mga tao, wow, galing. Pero deep within your heart, asar na asar ka na ginagawa mo yun. Kunyari, may nakita ka, nangangailangan. Ito, <laughs> tulong ko sa'yo, iboto mo ako. Ano ba? It's still actually approval from of men. O kaya naman, 
Nako na inidya lang. <laughs> Pero kung sa trotso lang, tatamad nyo kasi. Tapos ngayon, eh, hinihingin ka ng pera, kakapal ng... Pero pag nadi, naka, dahil sa harapan ng tao, para sa iyo ito. At sa totoo lang, maraming tao ganyan. They want to be recognized. Now, papakita ko sa inyo pa paano. Sabi ganun, they, they have received the reward in full. Tinan niya, karagtong niya, para papakita. Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Ibig sabihin, ni mismo ikaw na nagbigay. Hindi mo tinetake yung credit na ikaw ang nagbigay. Because you know that everything comes from God and I'm just doing it what the Lord instructs me to do. Kaya wala akong ipagmamalaki. Paano niyo malalaman? Simple lang. Sasample lang ko lang kayo na sample. Isa lang ha, pero marami pa yan. Sample. Malalaman niyo nagbigay ka na hindi mo alam ng kaliwa? Pagdating ng panahon, yung mga tinutulungan mo, gagantihan ka ng masama. At alam ng kaliwa yung ginawa ng kanan kapag ang sinabi mo, pag sila may problema, andyan ako lagi. Pag ako na, wala na silang lahat. Ang kakapal ng mukha nila. Alam ng kaliwa ang ginawa ng kanan. Pero kung ikaw ay ginawa ng masama sa kabila ng mga kabuti ang ginawa mo at sa mo, Panginoong Diyos, salamat po na binigyan niyo ang pagkakataong maging mabuti sa ibang tao. Ngayon, kung may masama silang ginawa, Lord, salamat sa mga pagsubok na ito. Hindi mo ikinaut din nila laban-laban sa kanila kasi hindi ka naman tumulong tila sa kanila. Si God lang eh. Kasi ang recognition tao, nako, trust me. Sanay na, sanay na. Ang dami mga tao sabi, oh, ang bait-bait mo, ang bait, grabe ka, pastor. Intayin mo pag nadapa ka. Aapakang kanila. Pag sabi, ang bait-bait mo, nung mali ka na, wala ka lang palang kwenta. Kala ko sino ka. Di ba? Nakita ko na yan ng maraming beses. Kaya buti na lang, ang audience mo, si God. Dahil si God, ang siyang nakakaalam ng tama para sa'yo. Now, ang sumunod na tinuro ng Lord, eto na. Prayer is blessing. Now, listen to this. Sino dito nakaranas na parang gusto mo na sumuko sa buhay? Parang, parang ayaw ko na, give up na ako. Kaya give up ka na sa trabaho. Parang ayoko na dito sa trabaho. Ito, ayoko na sa opisina nito. Dumating ka sa ganung punto. Okay, dumating na. Ayoko na sa asawa ko na ito. Naiinis na ako sa kanya. Okay, naiinis na ako sa mga kapitbahay namin. Naiinis na ako sa, sa mga anak ko. Naiinis na ako sa magulang ko. Dumating ka sa ganung punto. Alam niyo kung bakit? Meron tayong sekretong nakalimutan. Prayer is blessing. Prayer is blessing. So pray without ceasing. So, ano yung ibig sabihin yan? Walang tigil na, walang tigil. Tandaan nyo, utos ng Diyos yan ha. Sabi niya, pray without ceasing. Ano yung ibig sabihin? Walang tigil na panalangin. Yung mga, may, may, pangin, 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 pangin. Habang naglalag, pangin, 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 pangin. Tapos nakaupo ka yan, pangin, 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 pangin. Nahiga ka lang, pangin, 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 pangin. Ganun ba yung pray without ceasing? Hindi ah. Ang i- Mami, papaliwanan sa'yo. Pero, bakit niya inutos ito? Bakit niya inutos? Kasi, yung prayer, blessing. Ha? Paano naging blessing? Tignan niya sabi ng Bible. Kung babasahin yung Luke 18, for example, he gave several parables. And look at what he said. Telling them parables to show that at all times, they ought to pray and not to lose heart. If you stop praying, for sure it will come to a point in your life that you will faint. You will lose heart. You will end up giving up. If you want to persevere, ano sabi ng Diyos? Pray. If there are any regrets in heaven, the greatest will be that we spend so little time in real prayer. Ha? Huh? Sabi niya, kung alam mo lang sana, prayer is blessing. Kung meron tayong pagsisisihan sa mga pains, sa mga regrets ng buhay, sa buhay natin, mga frustrations, dahil hindi tayo nagpray ng tama. Tingnan niyo po, there was a song, and alam niyo pa nang kinantan kong kanta na to. Ewan ko narinig niyo to. Yung, narinig niyo, what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Tingnan What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Tingnan Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Mga wala naman sanang kwentang, hindi naman kailangan na pait ng buhay, dinala natin. Bakit? All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Kaya ang daming regrets, ang daming pain, dahil we didn't pray. Eh bakit? Alam niyo kung sino nagsulat ito? 
si Joseph Scriven. Alam niyo ba paan, ba't niya sinulat ito? The night before their wedding, yung girlfriend niya nalunod. Papakasal na sila the following day. And yet, ang sabi niya kay Lord, what a friend I have in Jesus. Amazing. Kung tayo yun, love mo God. Kakasal na ako. Inuha mo pa. Bakit hindi na lang yung best man? Ha? Matotoo lang. Nga, bakit hindi yung maid of honor o kaya yung mother-in-law? <laughs> Fucking siya. Diba? Pero sabi niya, diba, ang dami natin mga needless pain na dinalala kung hindi, dahil hindi lang natin dinala sa prayer. Kaya may I challenge you this. Remember, remember, because God cares for us, itong sabi ng Lord. Kung kayo pasuko na ngayon sa dami ng pataas ang pataas ang presyo, pataas ang pataas ng mga daming mga challenges, problema, kung gusto mong sumuko, listen to this. Be on guard. Bakit? So that your heart will not be weighted down with dissipation. You will fall into exhaustion. Dalagay parang ko, totally consumed. Parang wala na. Sabi niya, ingat ka. Bakit? Some will, eh, will fall into drunkenness because they're looking for pleasure that will cover up their troubles. Kaya naglalasing. And the worries of life. Sabi niya, ayoko kayo mabigla that they will not come on you suddenly like a trap. I don't want you to be surprised with all of this. Bakit? Because for it will come upon all those who dwell on the face of all the earth. It will surely come. Sabi ni Lord. It will come. Yung bang parang sobrang consume ka na, parang hindi ka na makapahinga. Nandun yung mga panahon na you will always seek for something that will make you, make you meaning and parang pleasure in life para lang masabi makapahinga ka. Yung ganyan. It will come. And you will be filled with so much worries. It will come. So, anong gagawin ko? Keep on the alert at all times. Paano? Babasahin ko lagi yung dyaryo para alam ko kung ano nangyayari. Hindi. Praying that you may not have, that you may have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Gusto mo maghanda sa kinabukasan? Hindi mo alam kung ano mangyayari sa mga anak mo? Natatakot ka? You pray. Diba? Problema mo, baka mawalan ka ng trabaho? You pray. Baka magsara yung kumpanya mo? You pray. That's the way to protect yourself. Be on guard. Kaya nga, if you want, in order for you to stand before the Son of Man, why stand before the Son of Man? Because He taught us and taught us and taught us to pray. Kaya, sabi ng Bible, pray. So, four words to remember. Pray. Sabi mo, pray. Presence, rest, ally, and yehey! Yehey! Why? It's a cry of victory. It's a cry of answered prayer. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng mga yan? Let's go to the presence. Presence. Oftentimes, ang prayer sa atin, ang isip natin kagad, yung hihingi tayo sa Diyos. Hihingi ako ng ganito, 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 ganito. Tsaka ganito gagawin ko, gaganito. Hindi, ang prayer is more than that. Ang ibang tao, they look at prayer as an opportunity to tell the world that they're spiritual. E sabi ng Bible, when you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and the street corners so that they may be seen by men. So I say to you, they have their reward in full. So mga hudyo, Gustong-gusto nila yon yung nakikita sila nagpe-pray. At kung mag-pray ito, kasi, pupunta sila sa mga street corners, ang synagogues, and doon sila nag And they would stand in the corner just to show how devoted they are to God. Sabi ng Lord, pag nag-pray ka, it's not for people to see. Hindi yan show time. Ang sabi ng Diyos, when you pray, etong gawin mo. When you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Ano si sabi niya? Listen. Here is Christianity. Christianity is relationships. At kung relationship yan, it's not just relationship, it's a father and son relationship. At hindi lang basta father and son relationship, it is an intimate father and son relationship. Close kayo, mag-ama. Nakuha po natin. Now, ito pong amazing. Ang totoong prayer, hindi yung ano yung sa paligid para makita, o, oh, pray ako. Ang totoong prayer, sabi ng Lord, yung nagkaroon kayo ng encounter at practicing ng presence ng iyong tatay sa langit. 
And the Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Alam mo ba sa ibang translation, sa ibang ano sa earlier manuscript ng Greek, ang nakalagay doon, will reward you openly. Kahit sa giving, will reward you openly. What does it mean? Hindi mo kailangang paglandakan. Dahil makikita. He will reward you openly. Kung ano ka, generous ka, makikita yung buhay mo, generous. Kung prayer, talaga nagpe-pray ka, hindi mo kailangang pakita sa tao nagpe-pray ka. Makikita lang sa mukha mo na nagpe-pray ka. Paano ka nalaman? Punong-puno ka ng kapayapaan. Eh, hindi yung pag- Nag-pray ka, mait ang ulo mo, naba? parang ang dahil pong problema. Amin, uh, nag-pray ka na ba? Hey, oh, oh, oh. Nee, pag nag-pray ka, alam mo, cast all your cares upon him, binatong mo na eh. Ba't mo pa dadalin? Wala ka nang dadalin. Binigay mo na kay God eh. Kaya sa mukha mo pa lang, alam na nag-pray ka. Itong idea ng Diyos, sabi niya, ang pinakas joy sa, press, sa, ano, sa, sa worship o sa prayer, yung alam mo, God is with you. Your Father is with you. I'll, t- I'll explain to you. Ganito yan. Halimbawa, halimbawa, ikaw may sakit ka. Tapos dumating yung, ano mo, yung iniirog mo. Ha? Dumating. Kasi kunyari kung ano pa lang, yung nanay mo pa lang, misa ng nanay natin o tatay, ka- alam natin mahal natin sila, mahal niya ta- nil tayo, pero iba yung ano, parang, anak, uminom ka na ng gamot. Oh, yung, ano, yung tulog na ako. Yan. Pero pag kras ang dumating, yung kras. Yung nitibok ang puso. Sabi, andyan si, si, ano, si Romeo. Oh, oh, oh. Tapos nagsin si Romeo. Oh, inom ka na ng gamot. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Ang pakiramdam mo, parang comported na comported ka. Ngayon, kanyan, yung sakit-sakit ang paa mo. Pwede ko, hilutin ko yan. Sa, ito si Romeo, huulitin niya. Oh, oh, ano, kamusta? Kumiginawa. <laughs> Iba ang pakiramdam. Just the mere presence parang may joy ka na. Meron ka nang answered sa prayer. Ah, napansin niya yan? Pero kung walang intimacy, kahit anong i-provide niya sa'yo, parang wala. Doktor dumating, wala ako, asar ka sa doktor, hindi mo papansin yan. Walang, inti- walang presence na naintindihan. Kaya nga ang Christian life, napakasarap. Kasi, kaya, y- y- full of ano, y- life. Kasi yung, yung the, the lover of your soul, the one you truly love, the first, parang, your first love, as you pray, you are with Him. Kaya nga, di ba, sabi ng Lord, kung mayroon akong ayaw sa iyo eh, you have forsaken your first love. Kasi, ang, ang Diyos dapat ang first love natin eh. So, pag nandiyan siya, the mere presence of God, it brings comfort to our hearts. Nung nasa San Francisco ako, I was, I was in terrible pain. I was struggling with my migraine, kaya takasobra. Eh, magpipreach ako. At the middle of the night, I was praying, crying before my father. And as I was cry- crying, sobrang comforted ako. Kasi he knew she was there. And he was there. And amazing pa dyan, habang kumakanto. Only by grace can we enter. Only by grace can we stand. Nakalimutan ko lyrics. Eh, tulog yung asawa ko. I didn't know. Na mag siya with the Holy Spirit habang tulog. Didiktan niya sa akin yung lyrics. <laughs> Dinidiktan niya yung lyrics. Ay ko, wow God, you're so amazing. Kahit nakalimutan ko na, naaalala. Dahil yung asawa ko nagsasalta. Pero alam ko, gising na siguro siya. Gising na siya, dinidiktan niya. So, lalong nakakanta ko ng maayos. Pero pa ako kanta na, ang tagal ko na, limot na limot ko na. Yung, O aking Diyos, Ikaw lang ang nais ko. Higit pa sa pilak, maging sa ginto. Wala nang maihahambing sa'yo. Mundo'y walang maiaalok. Sabi niya, pagkat ikaw lang ang nais ko. Iyak ako na iyak. Nasabi, eh nakakalimutan ko. Dutuktungan niya, dutuktungan niya. And bigla ko na, siyempre pagkaalala, parang sinasabi ng Lord, gusto ko yung marinig. What a great comfort knowing that God is there. Hello? That's presence. Alam niyo ba, Every time you remind yourself that God is our Father, ano siya sabi natin? That because of Jesus, yeah, kaya nga tayo when we pray in Jesus' name, we remind ourselves that we became child of God because of Jesus. At tinan nyo, sabi ng Lord, but when the fullness of time came, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that He might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions as sons, 
And sabi niya, because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. You word Abba? Daddy, Papa, Tatay. Yung parang yung endearment ng pagiging tatay. Sabi niya, we call crying, crying out, Tatay, Tay, Tay, Pa, Ma, ay, Pa, Dad, ma, yun yung Daddy. Father, therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God tagapagmana ka ng Diyos. Kung ano man ang lahat ng pagmamahal na pahayag ng Diyos sa kanyang anak ay Jesus Christ. Because we are now adopted sons, pag sabi niyang beloved, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, he is saying the same thing to us every time we come to God. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Come! I welcome you. Kaya marami sa atin takot manalangin kasi isip natin, God, you will not welcome me. Lord, kaya mas gusto ko yung sasabihin ng tao kasi yun, at least alam tanggap ako. No, wala yan, nagbabago yan. But God, He never changes. Paano ko nasabi? Alam niyo bang adopted sons during the Roman Empire? During the Roman times? Noon, ang anak pwedeng itanggi. Yung anak nga, totoo. Pwedeng itanggi. Pero, pag in ka, hindi ka na pwedeng itanggi. Kasi inadapt ka na eh. Halimbawa si Lito, inampun niya si Joseph nung panahon ng Roman Empire. Kung may anak siya na ang pangalan ay Jacob, pwede niya pang itapon si Jacob at itanggi si Jacob. Si Joseph, hindi niya na pwede itanggi. Bakit? Pinili mo na yan eh. Ibig sabihin, pinili mo na yan. At alam niyo bang ang grabing in- ang implikasyon nun? Sasample lang kayo. Halimbawa, may magkapatid. Yung isa ampun, isa hindi. Ngayon, inaaway nung ampon yung totoong anak. Biglang dumating ang tita. Ba't mo inaaway ang kapatid mo? Eh kasi yung yamang-yamang niya eh. Sabi niya, Hoy, alam mo bang, ikaw ay ampon labang. Tapos pumunta sa nanay, Nay, totoo ba yun? Ako isang ampon. Anak, bakit kailangan pang malaman? Sabi <laughs> hindi. Totoo ba sabi ni tita? Ako yung ampon. Oo, ampon ka nga. Sabi niya nga ba di? Naglayas dahil ampon. So itong kapatid ngayon, Nakita yung pagdadalamhati ng magulang. Sabi niya, Nay, tay, hahanapin ko po ang kapatid natin. Ang kapatid ko. Kasi alam kong mahal na mahal mo siya. Anak, pareho lang pagmamahal namin sa inyo. Walang pinagkaiba. Pero anak, talagang sobrang sakit sa puso. Hinanap. Pagkita niya ganun, Joseph! He! Hindi kita kilala! Hindi kita kapatid! Sabi niya, Joseph, kapatid kita. Hindi, ampun lang ako. Ano ka ba? Kahit ampun ka pa, walang pinag... Sa totoo lang, mas mahal ka pa nga ng magulang natin. Ano pinagsasabi mo? Kasi ikaw, ako, totoong anak, wala silang choice. Ikaw, sa dami ng mga bata noon na, na, na nagkawala, nagkakalat dyan, sa dami ng mga baby pagpipilian, ikaw ang pinili. You're so special to mommy and daddy. And out of the billions of people around the world, the mere fact that you are now with God, you were chosen by God because you are so special to Him. Kaya when you come to God in prayer, remember this. You are coming to your Father who chose you out of so many billion people. Kaya yung prayer is enjoying the very presence of God. Kahit anong ginagawa mo, you experience the presence of God. That's prayer. Every time you focus on your eyes while taking exam, you focus on the very presence of God. You're praying. Kaya tinan nyo, hindi yan tungkol sa sasabihin ng tao. Ito pang karuktong niya. And when you're praying, do not use meaningless repetitions as the Gentiles do. For they suppose that they will be heard of their many words. When you come to God in prayer, enjoying the very presence of God, it's not trying to impress God. It's not trying to control God. Minsan kasi kinokontrol natin Diyos sa magitan mga sasabihin natin. Lord, ang galing ko ng pagkakapray ko ha. Ang, Lord, ang dami ko na sinabi. Kailangan sagutin mo na ito. No. I answer you because you're my son. I answer you because we are intimate with one another. Because we're close and I love you. It's not because you're trying to control me. I, you don't need to control me. You know why? Nasabi na Lord, kasi tayo, lumaki tayo sa religiosity na minimamay sa ating prayer natin eh. Minimamay sa ating paulit-ulit ating pinag- Bata pa lang tayo. Mystery 1, mystery 2, mystery 3. At the end, puro mystery pa rin. Ano nangyari? Hindi natin naintindihan. And God is telling us, hindi ganyan mag-pray. Bakit? Sa totoo lang, you do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Alam ko naman yung pangangailangan mo eh. Eh, ba't pa ako kailangan mag-pray? Because you are more important to me. 
than what you are to say. And Samuel Jos, anak, don't ever forget this. You are more important to me. Kaya nga na enjoy mo yung prayer kasi nga you just enjoy the very presence of the one you truly love and the one who truly loves you. Kaya ko ang prayer sa atin mechanical, hindi organic. Ah, boring. And sabi ng Diyos, I don't want you to be mechanical. I want you to be organic. Parang ganito. Sino dito nakapunta na sa party na yung kasama sa table, hindi nyo masyadong kakilala? Wala, hindi siya nakakilala. Nagkataon lang. O, dyan kayo table, table. Sa... Pansin ninyo, hindi kayo basta makasalita. Kakain kayo. Nasa, sila, sila, ano, hindi kayo makabasta magkwento. Taga saan kayo, ganyan, di ba? Hirap, hirap tayo. Tama? Tama? Hindi kasi close. Hindi kayo magkakilala. Pero kung magkakaibigan kayo, pag din, Uy, kamusta ka rin? Grabe! Anak! Saan ka galing? Bangkas! Hindi pa ano ka ba? Mista, mista kita. Tapos magkakaibigan kayo. Kwentuhan kayo. Non-stop. It's something organic. Hindi siya mechanical. Hindi yung, How are you? I'm fine. Where are you from? You know, I'm from this. And ano? Uh, uh, where did you graduate? What course did you take? Wala nang ganun. Ito, pagkakita. Kamusta ka? Mista kita, grabe ka! Tapos kung mag-ama pa kayo ng close, Dad, grabe, ang ganda-ganda nangyari sa'yo kanina, ang ganda na naroon namin. O ngayon, napunod ko, grabe talaga eh. Close na close, parang, grabe, galing mo anak. That's my boy. O, di ba? Iba. Same thing with God. Dad, tay. Alam niyo ba kanina nung sabi, minister ako, nagsishare ng gospel. Dad, hindi ko alam sasabihin ko, thank you for giving me the wisdom. Dad, alam mo ba, nag-attend kami ng Bible sa atin, natutulog na ako. I asked you, remember? Nakakatawa. Nagising ako. Dad, nagising ako. Nakakatawa yung pastor. Pinagkikwentuhan niyo lahat. Bakit? Organic ni. Practicing the presence of God. That's what it means. Now, you can rest. Woo, rest. Bakit? Alam nyo ba kaya blessing ang prayer? Kasi when you pray, you'll find rest. Alam nyo ba ang dami tao so bothered about so many things? Kahit na nagsisidiling ko na sa Diyos, like Martha, when he, she welcomed Jesus, wow, look at him. She was bothered, worried, and bothered about so many things. Everything. She was thinking about doing it for the Lord. She was bothered. And yet, sabi ng Lord, only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part which shall not be taken away from her. Wala, hindi ka kasi nakinig sa akin eh. Kasi sabi ng Diyos, this is prayer. It's time that you spend with me, we talk, we communicate, you listen to me, I speak to you, you speak to me, I listen to you. Yan ang prayer eh. Hindi yung ikaw lang sabi na sabi. Nag-uusap talaga kayo. Kaya nga nung nandun ako sa bundok, sabi ng ma, anong, isang kasama namin na hindi Christian, sabi niya, ba't ko mag-pray ka? Parang ang lapit nyo ng Diyos. Gusto ko malutunan yan. So, sinaya ko yung gospel. Kasi hindi niya alam eh. Hanggang sa nung bandang huli, gusto na rin niya. Sabi niya, gusto ko maging pastor. Bakit? Sabi niya, kasi iba pala. Hindi yung nag-uusap ka lang na parang distansa na hindi mo maintindihan. Hindi, ito talaga mag-ama kayo nag-uusap. Kaya sabi ng Lord, tinan niyo, ganun din kay Mary. Kaya ang gusto niyo magkaroon ng rest in prayer. Oh, listen to this. Medyo mahaba ba ng konti, pero mabilis lang to. Rest in peace. <laughs> now, alam niyo ba, Oh, malapit naman na maundas. Kaya, remember, rest in peace. Bakit rest in peace? Sabi mo, kunyari, sabi mo sa katin mo, ikaw nga mag-pray, hindi ako marunong. Hindi ako marunong. Huwag na ako, huwag na ako. Na, Nawansin niyo ba yun? So you become restless, tama? Kaya sabi ng ambayt ng Diyos, binigyan tayo unang P, pattern. Binigyan tayo pattern. Sabi mo, when pray then in this way. So sabi ng Lord, if you are to meditate the Word of God, pinakita niya sa iyo pattern how to pray. Hindi niya sabi, ito yung prayer. Sabi niya, this is how you should pray. Ako niyo, pray then in this way. Kung talaga seryoso ka, matututunan mo naman eh. Obviously, hindi tayo magiging expert sa prayer, but we will continue on learning. The point is this, God is very much willing to teach us. Ako niyo, now, hindi lang pre- pattern. Pati yung relationship, paternity, paternity, bakit? Sabi niya, our father. At hin- doon makita, this is not just an ordinary father who is in heaven. He is far above what you think about Father. Maraming tao, they don't enjoy prayer when they say, Our Father. Building up that relationship. It's not selfish. Our Father. So, hindi selfish. It's a body thing. Now, itong amazing. Yung iba, ay, ayoko yung tatay ko. Hindi naman consistent. Yung tatay ko, laging wala. Tatay ko, kaya, ganyan ba si God? Come on. 
Obviously, it's not talking about the earthly father. Kahit anong bait pa ng tatay natin, they are still lacking in comparison to our God. Yung tatay natin, who is in heaven, is beyond compare. Kaya pinapaalala sa atin ng Diyos, tatanda natin, when we call a God, God Father, we are standing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, listen to this. Yung tatay natin, in His, in the, in his right mind, lahat ng tatay na nasa tamang utak, isip, laging iniisip ang kabutihan ng anak. Kunyari, sabi ni Samantha, strict to yung tatay ko, strict to yung magulang ko. Yes, strict to sila because He want to ask to be disciplined. Pero ang isip nila, hindi to destroy you. Ang isip nila is always for our good. Tama, mali. Kaya lang, hindi nila alam lahat. Kaya tinan nyo, sabi ng Bible. Sa, sa Hebrews chapter 12, sabi ng Bible, For they disciplined us for a short time, as seem best to them. But He disciplined us for our good, so that we may share His holiness. Ang sabi niya, yung mga tatay na sa lupa, with all their good intention, they cannot, they're not perfect. But our Father, so when we come to God in prayer, we're excited. You know why? Because our Father desires us to be successful, desires us to experience His goodness and His holiness. He is being set apart from the world. Hindi mo kailangan gumay sa mundong ito. Lost, going nowhere. But I'm telling you, as you come to me, I am your Father who desires the best in your life. Now suppose one of you, Father, is asked by his son for a fish. He will not give him a snake instead of a fish. Will he? Tama ba? Kayo ba, pag humingi kayo sa tatay niya, tayo pengi isda. O ito, ahas, para sa'yo. Na? Obviously, hindi gagawin ng tatay natin yan. Or if he asks for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion. Will he? Siyempre, hindi. Itlog talaga. Ang sabi niya, if you then, being evil, mabait na yon. Evil yon in comparison to God know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Napansin niyo ba ito? It, ito ang amazing. Sabi ng Lord, hingi ka ng isda, hindi lang kita bibigyan ng isda, ako mismo, ibibigay ko buo ko sa'yo. Lahat ng aking ari-arian, bilang may ari ng karagatan, bibigay ko sa'yo ang sarili ko. The Holy Spirit. Pag humingi ka sa akin ng itlog, hindi lang kita bibigyan ng itlog. Ibibigay ko, ako mismo, the presence, my very presence, in the person of the Holy Spirit. Kasi sa totoo lang, sometimes you don't need a change of circumstance. What you need is a change of heart. Kaya pag humingi ka ng itlog, hindi ka bibigyan ng Scorpio. Ang problema ng tao, minsan ang hinihingi niya is Scorpio. Hindi, ang hinihingi ahas. Pag hindi binigay ng Diyos, ibig sabihin, hindi makakabuti sa'yo. Okay po? Kanyari, Panginoon, bigyan mo itong lalaki, ito sa as- bigyan, asawa ko, bigyan asawa ko, bigyan asawa ko, sabi ng Lord, sorry, hindi. Bakit? Lalaki ka din. <laughs> ah, siyang hinihingi mo. <laughs> Ikaw naman, okay, babae ka naman, Panginoon, bigyan mo itong lalaki na ito, bigyan mo itong lalaki na ito. Tapos, napunta sa ibang babae. Lord, bakit ganun? Anak, hindi ko ibibigay sa kanino man ang ahas. So, ahas siya? Hindi. Ikaw. <laughs> ahas ka sa kanya. Minsan, napaka-conceited natin, parang lagi silang ahas eh. Minsan, tayong ahas sa kanila, kaya hindi tayo ibibigay sa kanila ng Diyos. Di ba? Dahil malasakit niya sa lahat. Awar, Father. Okay? Nagkakanda diyan? Hindi lagi mga sarili lang, hindi sarili lang natin. No, letter P, perspective. Look at this. God is giving us a different perspective in life. Tandaan ninyo, Life is not a matter of intelligence. It's a matter of perspective. Kasi sabi ng Lord, Hallowed be your name. Bakit hallowed be your name? Ang sinasabi niya, pag sinasabi mong hallowed be your name, I adore you, Lord. I set you apart. You are to be honored above all. Now, para mong tinan niyo, pag sinasabi ko, hinihiwalay ko kayo sa lahat, and you, be, you alone deserve all the glory and honor. Ano ibig sabihin niyan? Sino mahilig mag-basketball dito? Basketball? Ah, yan, yan, yan. Sino paborito mong player? Derrick Rose. Yung sa dating Chicago na nalipat sa Timberwolves. Okay. Si Derrick Rose, paborito niya. Ngayon, paborito, paborito niya. Ay, si Derrick, si Derrick, grabe, galing niya. Pumunta sa Pilipinas. Nakita mong personal. Oh, Derrick! Tayo picture, picture. Yan, yeah, selfie, selfie. Tapos magkatapos, please sign autograph. Ha? So, pinirmahan niya yung t-shirt mo. 
Yung t-shirt na yan. Pinirmahan. Di ba may linya? Doon pa talaga sinulat. Derek Rose. <laughs> yung t-shirt na yan, trust me, hindi niya nalalaban yan. He will set that t-shirt apart from all the other t-shirts. Kasi may pirma yan ng Derek Rose. Lalagay niya sa kwadra yan. Yan ang pinilmahan ni Derek Rose. Ang tawag dyan, hallowed t-shirt. When you say, Lord, you are my Father, hallowed be your name. Ikaw lang ang akin pong itataas, wala ng iba. You're so special to me. Ang punto niyan, itong challenge. What you think when you are alone, what you aspire when you are alone, most probably, that's your real God and priority in life. Kaya pag nag niya, when you are in secret, your father sees what you're doing in secret. Ang utak mo ba, Lord, ikaw po ang hangad ko? Kahit in, your, in the privacy of your heart, si God ang hinahanap mo. Lord, gusto ko po maging matagumpay, maraming pera, maraming ba, maraming, ba, maraming babae, maraming lalaki. Pag gano'n ang utak mo, it only means, yun talagang pursuit mo sa buhay. Pero Lord, I just want you. You are more than enough to, for me. And this wonderful. Kapag si God ang talagang pinili mo, you would be surprised. Nakalala ko sa, nasa Singapore kami. I listened to Edmond Chan. Para maintindihan niyo lang, si Edmond Chan, naglalakad, na naginip siya, naglalakad siya bago siya ikasal. Kasama niya, holding hands niya yung kanyang girlfriend at that time, na asawa niya na ngayon. Nung naglalakad siya, bigla pa naman sa taloy, pag natin tulay, nakita niya si Jesus at the other end of the bridge. Si Jesus! Sa sobrang paghahangad niya kay Jesus, nabitawan niya si, yung ano, asawa niya, yung girlfriend niya during that time. Ang pangalan ay Ann. Bitawan si Ann. Pak. Si Jesus! Takbo! Iniwan! Pagdating sa kalagitnaan, pug! Mamimili ka ngayon. Jesus? Ann. Ay, sorry. Jesus? Ann. Jesus? Ann. Naku, sabi niya, si Jesus na matay para sa akin. Si Jesus ang mas important sa akin. Pinili niya si Jesus. Hiniwan niya si Ann. Pagdating na pagdating niya kay Jesus, nagulat siya. Nandun na si Ann. Mas mabilis tumakbo. <laughs> Anong punto ng Diyos? When you put me first, I will give you the best in your life. Delight yourself in the Lord and I will give you the desire of your heart. Kaya minsan, alam niyo po, every day of our lives, we're making choices. Minsan sabihin ng Lord, oh, mag-pray ka na. In the privacy of your heart, pray ka na. Eh, nanonood ka pa ng paborito mong teleserye. Korean, Jesus. Tao Mingsu, Jesus. Ang daming choices! And say, Lord, Ikaw pa rin. Bakit? You died for me. Si Dao Ming Su will die also. But you, you gave me life. Nakuha? Yun ang punto ng Diyos. You hallowed His name. You put God first in everything. Kaya tuloy ang isip mo, yung kingdom niya na. Kaya nga sabi ng Bible, tingnan nyo ha, kasi tayong lahat, sobra tayo, itong inherent nature natin. Wag, hindi ko nababasahin ito ha. Yung inherent nature natin, laging demanding tayo. Kaya alam natin, user tayo, hindi talaga tayo nagmamahal sa Diyos. Kasi tatawag lang tayo pag may bagyo. Tatawag lang tayo pag kailangan natin. Tatawag lang tayo pag binigay ng Diyos yung bigay, gusto natin. Pero pag ayaw na, ayaw na rin natin sa Diyos. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo talaga isinet aside si God na pinakamatindi sa buhay mo. Ginagamit lang natin si God. Nakuha natin? Kaya ang sabi ng Lord, kasi ganito tayo. Nung isipin nyo, ito ginamit ito ni Timothy Keller, gagayahin ko lang. Sabi ni Timothy Keller, imagine yourself, halimbawa anak ka, dinala ka sa Toys R Us. Ang sabi niya, anak, turo mo ang gusto mo. Lahat ang gusto mo. Pinagtuturo, ito, 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 ito. Kotse, robot. Anak, tandaan mo to. Hindi ko yan ibibigay sa'yo. At gagawin ko ang lahat na magagawa ko na hindi mo yan makamtan. <laughs> So, ano nangyari sa utak mo? Wala na. Wala ka ng tiwala sa ganyang klaseng Diyos. Wala ka ng tiwala sa ganyang tatay. Wala ka ng... So, but, you feel so insecure. Tama? Yan ang ginawa ng Satan. Itong sabi ng Lord, ito lang daw po, ano, prutas ng puno, kaka- di namin pwede kainin. Uy, hindi yan. Hindi ka mamamatay. Ang totoo niyan, ayaw lang ni God. Parang pinagdadamutan ka ng Diyos. Kaya minsan, kaya di natin enjoy ang Diyos. Ang perspective natin, pinagdadamutan ako ng Lord. Ang totoo, hindi. 
Sobrang pagmamahal niya. Kaya nga sabi niya, huwag mo kainin yan kasi it will never be good for you. Nagkakaroon yan? Hello? Kaya ang punto ng Diyos, you worship me, you declare the bigness of me, the greatness of me, para magmahilom yung sakit mo ng demand, sakit mo ng ano, entitlement, yung sakit mo na ikaw ang sentro ng buhay. I want you healed. Papano? You adore me. You hallow my name. You focus on my kingdom. Kaya sabi ng Bible, your kingdom come. Ibig sabihin, kayo maghari sa akin. Ito yung sabi niya, Lord, for He rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Itong kingdom na to is something unseen. It is, cannot be seen by a naked eye. But this kingdom is real. Kaya sabi ng Bible, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. It's something beyond what we can think, ask, or even imagine. Now listen to this. Itong kingdom na to, mayroon pang literal, Lord, your kingdom ka, dumating yung totoong kingdom mo. Ano yung kingdom na yon? Ito siya sabi ng Lord. There is a kingdom, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ and He will reign forever and ever. Dalawang sagot ng Lord. When you pray, thy kingdom come, yung perspective mo na bago na, that you live for the kingdom of God and you live for the coming kingdom of the Jesus Christ. Bakit? Kasi siya yung hari ko eh. And I'm so excited to have Him. Halimbawa, nung panahon ng hapon, gumawa sila ng sariling pera, tama? At kung naniniwala ka na yung, kaha- yung paghahari ng hapon ang siyang mag- eventually magtatagumpay, lahat ng ari-ari mo, binenta mo para maging pera ng hapon. Tama? Ang problema, natalo ang hapon. Lahat ng investment mo, lahat ng perang hapon, nawalan ng saysay, naging papel de hapon. Bakit? Because they did not win. So imagine, this earthly kingdom is nothing. Everything that you're trying to accumulate, everything that you're trying to have, your name in this earthly kingdom will come to an end and it will become useless. Bakit? Because there is a future kingdom coming. The kingdom that will never end. The kingdom of Jesus Christ that will live forever and ever. Dun tayo. Kaya naman, kung talagang excited ka for the coming of the kingdom, itong sabi ng Lord, in the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved His appearing. So when you are praying, yung perspective mo is to focus on the coming of the kingdom of God. Excited ka ba? Talaga? Kung excited ka, pati yung prayer mo mag-iiba. Bakit? Tingnan nyo. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the world, the whole world, as a testimony to all the nations. And then, the end will come. If you're excited, tell the people all over the world about this kingdom so that it will come. Therefore, be on the alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. So friends, anong priorities natin sa buhay? Is it really the kingdom of God? So ang prayer ni Lord, yung kapitbahay namin, mabagi ang ko ng, ng, ng gospel of the kingdom. Lord, yung office mate ko. Lord, kasi bakit? I'm part because I'm excited to see the king. Okay ba yan? Now, hindi lang yan. Wow, you can rest in another P. Plan. Kahit ano pang nangyayari sa buhay mo, minsan napakadilim, hindi mo maintindihan. There's something that you can be assured of. Yung tatay natin sa langit, nagpaplano para sa atin. Ang sabi niya, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May mga bagay hindi mo natin, Lord, ang labo naman, hindi ko naintindihan, ito nangyayari sa akin. Ano sabi ni, katulad ni Joseph, binenta siya ng mga kapatid niya sa Egypt, naging alipin, naging, ano, hindi lang alipin, nakulong pa. Di ba? Katulong, nakulong, pagkatas, naging prime minister. Ano sabi niya? You meant it for, ano? You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Ano sabi ng Lord? May plano ko maganda para sa iyo. Kaya instead of complaining, you rest in your prayer. You rest that God has a great plan for you. Tinan niyo ha? Katulad nito. Sabi ng Lord, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. The plans for welfare, not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Bakit? Kasi itong mga taong to, sumuko na kayo sa kay Nebuchadnezzar. Hindi, nalabang kami. Hindi kami papayag, nasakupin kami ng ibang bayan. Sabi ng Lord, 
I know the plans for you. You submit to me. You listen to my prophets. You listen to my words. You listen to the proclamation of my word. Bakit? Kasi they, I declared the end from the beginning. From ancient time, things which have that been done, saying my purpose will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Gagawin ko yun, anak. I want you to know about it so you won't be bothered, so you won't be disturbed, so that you won't be, you may be succumbed with worries. Alamin mo yung word ni God. Can you read your Bible? You pray to God? Kasi, dineclare niya na aling ganda sa atin, pinakita niya na sa atin yan eh. Nandyan na oh. Pag sinabi niya, kunyari, Lord, hindi na ako makaka, I cannot listen to my parents. Labo-labo nila. Hindi ko sila maintindihan. Ang sabi ni Lord, trust me, I know the plans I have for you. Honor your parents. Huh? Ito din labo. Trust me. Wives, submit to your husband. Lord, Hindi mo alam, yung asawa ko, grabe, mali, mali, mga desisyon. Trust me, I know. You come to me in prayer, and I know. Love your wife. Yung asawa ko, bunga ngera, Lord. Love her. Trust me. I know, I have plans for you. You trust, ibig sabihin, you trust God's instruction. Okay ba yun? Ito, ihuro sa ating kahapon, and last week ni Pastor Peter. You give your tithes. Lord, wala na ako pere. Trust me, I know the plans I have for you. If you really understand, tinakita na ng Diyos eh, kaya you, are, you will be rested. Kaya ito rest for Lord, I trusted you, I believe in you. Okay? Now, itong ganda, provision. God will provide. Isipin mo ha, kaya maraming tao, sobrang walang peace sa puso, they never ask God for what they really need. Sabi ng Bible, give us this day our daily bread. Now, sinasabi ng Diyos ganito, you want to rest instead of thinking, meditating on your problems. Sabihin mo sa Diyos. As you open up your heart to God, listen to this, please sabi niya, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Ano pansin niyo? And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Kaya, naalala niyo yung give us this day, it's like a mana. Mana, every day niya binadadala. Give us a day, our daily bread. Kaya, dun pa lang sinasabi ng Diyos. Ngayon, as you are praying, in other words, you are responsible. Responsible. Kunyari, kung nagpipray ka ng daily bread, ano sabi ng Lord? Pupulutin niya sa umaga. Gigising yung umaga, kukuha kayo. So, may trabaho ka. Paano natin ginagawa yan? Lord, give us our need, our daily bread. Kaya ka pumapasok every day sa trabaho. Tama? Eh, di ba, kinsenas naman ng sheldo? Yes, but you do it every day. Absent ka nung isang day, bawas sa kinsenas. Tama ba? Yan ang sinasabi ng Diyos, you gather it every day. In other words, as you pray, you are at peace. As you do your responsibility, si Lord ang tuturo sa iyo. Mga estudyante, you pray to God, Lord, tulungan mo ako sa exam. Ayoko lang tres, gusto ko mag-excel. Okay, do your responsibility. Aral ka every day. Hindi yung, pag-pray ka, tapos laro ka ng laro ng video game. Pagdating sa exam, Lord, hindi ko na alam, tulungan mo ako. Pagdating sa katabi mo, hallelujah. Ano ka ba? Hindi ganun. Ba? Kaya sabi ng Lord, you bring your issues to God in prayer by believing and telling Him exactly what you really need. Cast all your cares upon Him. Be specific. Ano yung amazing si God? Even for my personal need, sinasabi ko sa Lord kung magkano kailangan ko. I pray. Lord, kailangan ko po gantong halaga. Lord, tulungan niyo po ako. Kailangan ko po ng gantong halaga. And you would be surprised. Pinibigyan na just exactly what I asked for. And sometimes, sobra. Lord, ba sobra? May tights. Oo nga pala. Lord, ba't kulang? Sobra hiningi mo. Oo nga pala. He gives exactly what I... Kaya doon mo alam, sinagot ang prayer mo. Instead of worrying, you tell God. Okay ba yan? Another P, pardon. Pardon. Don't you see that sometimes we lose our rest because we're too guilty? And look at the words. Forgive us our debts. Sa dami ng mga words sa kasalanan, like amarsya, paraba, parabasis, paraptoma, Ang ginamit ng Lord, hindi anomia or lawless, ang ginamit niya, opelayma. Bakit opelayma? Ibig sabihin, Lord, I have sinned to you and you alone. So, in other words, any sin you did, it's an, an offense against God. Pero sabi ng Lord, Lord, forgive me my debts. Ano si sabi ng Lord? When I told you that I will forgive you, and that I, you asked me for forgiveness, I'm meaning I'm willing to forgive you. Because I want you to be forgiving. Gusto ko ikaw din makapagpatawad. 
Kaya ayoko na ikaw na magdala-dala mo pa yan sa puso mo na punong-puno ka ng guilt. Rest in my forgiveness because the work of God, the, the death of Jesus Christ is sufficient enough to make you righteous before me. And finally, protection. And protection. So, hindi natin alam ang pwede mangyari kinabukasan. But sabi ng Bible, it maging prayer mo to. Lead us not itong temptation. No. Naalala niyo si Peter? Sabi ni Jesus, Peter, Satan asked permission to sift you like wit. Naalala niyo yan? And said, but I prayed for you that you will not fail. Sabi ganun, that when you, when you get back on your feet, you strengthen your brothers. Ano siya sabi ng Lord? Peter, nagpapaalam si Satan sa akin. Pinayagan ko. Kasi when I told you to watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation, you fell asleep. Kaya pinayagan ko na siya. But dahil ka, hindi ka nakinig, pinag-pray na rin kita. Even in Job, mapapansin kay Job? Si Job, amazing. Siya, nagpaalam din si Satan. Sabi niya nun, oh, does Job honor you for nothing? Sabi niya, or fear you for nothing? Tanggalin mo yung mga blessings na yan. Pag hindi, pinayagan ni God. Tanggalin mo. Di ba? Oh, maganda lang katawan yan. Bigyan mo ng sakit. Flesh. With flesh. Diba? Skin with skin. Sabi niya, okay, gawin mo. Pinayagan. Alam niyo kaya tayo minsan, ang dami natin problema? Never did we really ask God, Lord, ilayo mo naman sa gantong tukso. Yung ganto, yung gantong tukso, gantong tukso, gantong tukso. Bakit? Kasi, kaya sinasang pinapayagan niya si Satan. Kasi ang tukso, hindi lang tukso, temptation, kundi pati trials. Kaya hindi tayo prepared. Nagugulat tayo. Sabi ng Lord, mag-pray ka that, you will, that hindi niya papayagan si Satan. Kanyari, halimbawa lang, sabi ni God, sabi ni Satan, o yan, sinasamba ka lang yan kasi pinagpapala mo eh. Eh nag-pray ka, Lord, huwag niyo naman po ang payagan na subukin ni Satan sa ganito kasi natatakot po ako, di pa ako ready. Ay, hindi kita papayagan. Nag-pray yung anak ko. Hindi daw. Hindi siya ready. Kaya huwag mong gagalawin yan. Tatama ka sa akin. Ah, napasin? Eh hindi ka nag-pray. Sige, subukan mo na. <laughs> ah, napasin niyo? Eh, eto ang ganda. Paano kung pinayagan pa rin ni Lord? Deliver us from evil. Kung pinayagan pa rin, may God give you the power, the endurance to overcome temptation. Kaya mga anak, rest in peace. Ano mga peace na sinasabi ng Lord? Pattern, paternity, perspective, plan, provision, pardon, and protection. You have to have an ally. Remember your ally. Sa mundong ito, God did not just let you to be alone. You have an ally. Ano yung alay mo? Kaya sabi ng Lord, when you pray, so, lagi kang mag-pray, hindi yung mag-pray ka lang kung kailan mo kailangan. Pray unceasingly. Always be in the presence of God. Okay po? Bakit? Tignan niyo, give us our daily bread. Give us this day. Sa madali sa daily, you come to God. You pray to God. Alam niyo bakit? Because if God is with us, who can be against us? Ano si sabi ng Diyos? Kakampi mo ko anak. Hindi mo kailangan isang tabi. Ako ang kakampi mo to allow you to experience the victory in your life. Prayer is blessing. And finally, ang sabi ng Bible, Yehey! Bakit? For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and amen. Bakit ganun na lang? Yes! Wala kang kakatakutan. God listens to you. God will answer your prayer. God will accomplish what's best for you. Bakit? Because His is the kingdom. Pag-aari niya lahat. He has the power. Hindi siya nangangako dahil gusto kanya lang ma- ma- masayahan. Kaya niyang gawin ang pinangako niya. And His is the glory forevermore hindi mapaparangala ng sino man, kundi ang Diyos lamang. Hindi si Satanas, hindi mga tao sa paligid mo, kaya wag ka mag The glory belongs to me. Amen po? Kaya sabi ng Lord, I will end. Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for me. Kanya lamang, hindi mo ito ma-experience. Kasi akala ng tao, uy, Christian na ako. Maraming ganyan. They, they believe that they are close to God, they're intimate with the Lord, pero mali ka. Sabi ni Lord ganito. Pakinggan nyo ha. For if you forgive others for their transgression, and your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Ha? Huh? Akala ko ba ang forgiveness ko dependent kay Jesus, hindi sa ginawa ko? Eh, but pag hindi ako nagpatawa, hindi rin ako papatawarin. Alam nyo, ano ibig sabihin yan? Hindi mo talaga tinanggap ang kapatawaran ng Diyos na ginawa ni Jesus Christ kung hindi ka marunong magpatawad. Pa? Paano ka natin alaman? Ito sabi ni John. Beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. 
And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Ano ibig sabihin? Verse 20. For if someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. Ang dami nagugulat ako. They claim to be close with God, but they cannot forgive their husband, they cannot forgive their wives, they cannot forgive their neighbors, they cannot forgive their, their siblings, they cannot, they're full of bitterness. Paano nangyari yun? They do not really belong to Jesus. Because if you truly belong to Jesus, you can never say, I cannot forgive. Because God is love, and His love is greater than your hatred. Kaya wala kang galit sa kapitpahay. Wala kang galit sa in-laws. Wala kang galit kahit kaninang tao. Bakit? Because the love of God overflows. Sa si Ginger Haan, their ministry is hope ministry. Alam niyo, nagulat po ako. Somebody sent me this, and I checked. Gulat ako. This woman, they were ministering, pastor's wife. Unfortunately, nagkita niya sa, sa ano, sa, mayroon siya natanggap na sulat. Yung sulat, a sermantic letter to, his hus- to, her, to her husband. Habi niyo, ano to? At ang pinakamatindi, lalaki. Now listen, her husband was struggling with homosexuality. Pastor yun. So itong babae na to, kinausap niya yung husband niya. The husband repented, Inamin niya, nang sabi niya, so to make the long story short, he resigned from his pastoral responsibility. Nag-resign. Di akala niya, answered prayer. Tapos pray siya, Lord, anong gagawin ko? Everybody was telling him, telling her, divorce mo na yan, iwan mo na yan. As she was praying, the Lord impressed upon her heart. 1 Corinthians 13. Binasa niya verse 7, sabi ng Lord, faithful to the one you love. He, he bears all things. You know, ganyan. So sabi niya, Lord, what does it mean? Mahalin mo siya the way I loved him. So, ang hirap. So to make the long story short, tuloy na naman. Yung lalaki went on with his homosexual and ano, parang practice. And sabi Lord, I will heal him. But it will take, ano, it will be slow. Because it took five years. Kept on praying. The man left them. Five years, ha? Iniwan na sila. Susuko ka na? Hindi. Pray pa rin siya kay Lord. Naniniwala siya sa sagot ni Lord that he would be healed. That this person would be healed. And they, God will fix their family. At on the fifth year, all of a sudden, pag uwi ng babae, galing sa trabaho, nakita niya asawa niya sa couch. Sabi niya, oh, ang ginagawa mo rito? Sabi niya, I really am planning to transfer to another state. No longer to see you. No longer to talk with you. And I was determined to leave you once and for all. But all of a sudden, when I woke up, God was speaking to my heart, go back to your home. Go back to your home. And I did. Will you still accept me? Wow. The guy repented, as in, went back to his house, to his, to his ano, family. Uy, sold na, five years. Hindi pa. Without knowing, na yung dalawang anak niyang lalaki, nahulog din with the same struggle. Iniwan sila for the next seven years. But they kept on praying as husband and wife. On the seventh year, both of them came back to Jesus Christ. Sabi niya, wow, amazing! Now, may, may, kaya pa, ano? Pero naging struggle pa rin ako, sabi ng lalaki. Let's keep on praying. Until one day, in a stop, pak! Sabi niya, I could not understand. I'm totally healed. And God is telling me to testify before the world. And no nag-testify, sabi ng pastor nila, why don't you testify as a family? All of them were healed. And amazingly, it took years in prayer, not giving up, and they did not lose heart because they prayed without ceasing. Ano siya sabi ng Diyos? Oh, listen to this. Walang hopeless case sa Diyos. Walang hopeless case sa Diyos. Kaya lang tayo nagiging ho, ano, hopeless because we stop praying. We are prayerless. Kaya if you want to be, to be hopeful, be prayerful. By God's grace, hindi tayo experts sa prayer, but one thing for sure, with the little knowledge we have, practice it. Gawin natin. Hindi yung konti na lang alam natin, hindi pa natin ginagawa. Kaya ho, this is what I do. I just explain with you. To adore God, I just praise the Lord. Pag hindi kaya ng puso ko, 
I play music. I sing songs to God. Pag hindi pa rin kaya, I read psalms. Pag hindi rin kaya, I will read devotional and I will just praise the Lord and focus on who God is. And God will change your perspective and allow you to see His presence and encounter Him and say, Yes! For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Biglang, yehey! That brings power in our prayer. Kaya tingnan niyo katabi mo. Pagka doon pa lang sa prayer, walang ka yehey, yehey. Bakit? Wala kang experience. But let me tell you this. I don't care what you're going through in your spiritual life. I want you to bow down your head. Speak to God and say, God, ayoko lang maintindihan to at marinig lang to. I want to really experience you now. Be sincere with God. Say, mo, Lord, di ako maroon mag-pray. Turuan mo naman po ako. Lord, help me to really praise you. Help me to really practice your presence. Lord, purihin mo ang Panginoong Diyos. You just start doing it. Sige, gawin natin ngayon. Don't look at me. You look at God. You focus on the Lord. Don't look at me. Don't look at the person next to you. You, praise to, you pray to God. Say, mo, Lord, kausapin mo siya, sabihin mo, niloloob mo, God. I want, Lord, teach me to pray. Teach me to pray. Teach me, Lord, to really seek your heart. That I would pray that you would be my only audience. Kayo lang, Lord. I want to be alone with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Alam nyo itong aloneness sa Diyos. It's, God is not against public prayer. In fact, they do it publicly in Acts chapter 4. But God, even in public, in public prayer, your heart is exclusive with God, sincere before the Lord. As in when you pray, you mean what you say, you say what you mean. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Kung hindi mo talaga alam kung ikaw ay anak ng Diyos o hindi, why don't you come and say, sabi ni Jesus, but to those who receive Jesus, he gave them the right to become children of God. Friends, sabi mo, Lord Jesus, I come before you because I know I am not worthy before your very presence. But Lord God, I come to you because I trusted, I trust the work that Jesus did on the cross. That He died for me. He rose again from the dead for me. And by His resurrection, you're giving me a new life and I accept that now. Take control of my life. Be the Lord of my life for you are my Savior. Lord, reign in me. Let your kingdom come. Let you reign in me, Lord Jesus. And start calling God Father. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for changing me to be a person that will honor and glorify your name. That I would be blessed. That I would experience your joy. I would experience the blessing of prayer. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. God, you are wonderful. You are great. Words are not enough to declare your greatness, O God. You own the heavens and the earth. You created everything out of nothing, O God. In that, Lord Jesus, I believe that even in the very means, in the very situation I am, O God, I thank you that you can do anything, O God, that will honor your name, that will make our lives, Father God, worthy of your name. Father God, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that nothing is impossible with you. And Lord, thank you that you will give us everything that we need. Thank you that you have freed us from guilt. Thank you that you will help us to forgive others. Thank you, Lord, that you will lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus, for indeed we are confident that you will answer our prayers for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Hallelujah! Forevermore! Hallelujah! Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.